Here's a sentence I never thought I'd be saying on this channel. Fashion brand Lyle and Scott have created a mechanical wristwatch that comfortably beats the likes of Seiko, Orient and Casio, at least on paper. Surprisingly, this isn't even clickbait. Let's get into it. So this all started when a viewer of the channel, Tony, dropped me an email linking me to what appeared to be a ridiculously well-specced watch for an equally ridiculous price. PVD steel construction, 50 meters water resistance, and a Seiko NH35A automatic movement for under 70 pounds. At least in the UK, those specs for that price are hard to beat, unless you head to sites like AliExpress and grab a Chinese no-name brand. Of course, I'm the YouTube wristwatch test dummy. So I got Amazon to send this in and they covered the cost of this for this review. It's linked in the video description. Let's see if this Scottish knitwear golf brand can beat the horological legends at their own game. By the way, I've got no idea who's actually producing these watches. I doubt it's actually Lyle and Scott themselves, but their badges on it, so let's continue nonetheless. First impressions were excellent. Within the outer box, the watch was packaged in a fabric and faux leather roll that not only looks great, but features several pouches and pockets that make this a truly functional item, which could be realistically used to store multiple watches when traveling. This is not what I was at all expecting and it's probably the best packaging that I've come across for a budget watch. I like the idea that this can continue to be used and not just stored or thrown away after a day. Great work. It then came to pulling out the watch and we're gonna stop it here. I half expected those specifications to be false or the watch itself to be fake, especially for the price. Because as we know, lots of these fashion brands tend to charge quite a lot for rubbish watches normally. And we've seen plenty of Amazon listings with specification mistakes and occasionally dodgy third party sellers who are attempting to offload fraudulent goods. As such, I was pleased to be met with a genuine functional piece that seemed to align with advertised specs. I'm gonna be completely upfront here. The watch isn't to my taste visually. It's also a bit too large for my wrist too, a 41 and a half millimeters wide, 30 millimeters deep and 46.8 look to look. That thickness does include the domed crystal, which I'll talk about in a moment. So it wears slightly smaller than the measurement suggests. Either way, there doesn't seem to be a smaller version of this watch available, limiting this watch to average and larger wrist sizes, unless you like the bulky look. This watch holds the nickname of the stealth watch for good reason. This matte black PVD steel case feels extremely substantial and durable. According to my research, this covering should aid the scratch resistance and corrosion resistance, though I could imagine scratches showing up rather badly if they did occur. Other than that, it's a dream when it comes to fingerprints, they simply don't happen, and it provides a tactical aesthetic that even Bruce Wayne would be fond of. The only part that isn't so stealthy is the inscription down the left flank of the watch. Whilst slightly muted by the blasted finish and not on the same scale as that featured on many Invictors, no, please, no more, no more. <laughs> it's still a loud indicator that this is a Lyle and Scott wristwatch. If you like the brand, you may think this is cool. Otherwise, it looks a bit cringy. Things do improve when we look at the case rear. This has an exhibition case back, allowing you to see the mechanical movement within. Whilst the finishing on said movement is nothing special, it does come with a custom black rotor featuring the Eagle logo. I expected this to just be a standard stock movement, so this was an interesting surprise. With a beat rate of 6 per second or 21,600 per hour, the NH35A gives a reasonable amount of smoothness to the tick and offers modern features such as hand winding capability and hacking, allowing you to stop the second hand for precise adjustments. The crown is particularly smooth and responsive when altering the time too. And not only is this movement an improvement on those offered in similarly priced Seiko 5 watches, but the five bar water resistance is too. This takes the watch from splash proof to a more palatable and submergible level. This has always been one of the trade-offs made with budget Seiko 5 watches, so it's pleasing to have a small boost. But either way, I probably wouldn't take this one full swimming if you can help it. Also present is a piece of domed mineral crystal and an unexpectedly strong NATO strap that matches the color scheme of the dial. While the quality is good, unfortunately the thickness doesn't make it the best fit for this watch. The double layered fabric turns this into a 17 mm spaceship that hovers off the wrist. Good luck getting a long sleeve over the top of this beast. As a hybrid fashion watch slash proper watch, the looks are still gonna be of primary importance here. 
Despite my distaste for this particular aesthetic, I'll run you through each part in case you come to a different conclusion. The dial surface has a grainy, almost stone-like texture to it, which I think works well with a matte finish. From what I can tell, I think it is slightly curved at the edges towards the chapter ring, though it could be an optical illusion from the glass. It features an applied, fairly detailed crest just below the noon position, along with lightly raised numbers at each hour. Surprisingly, the amount of text on here is nice and minimal, with just two lines indicating the movement type below the central stem. There's then an inner 24 hour ring reminiscent of that on the Timex Weekender, along with yellow pips around the perimeter, which surprisingly house no luminescence. Fortunately, this is found on the numbers instead, and when combined with the hands, it gives very legible low light readability, despite not being the brightest out there. While it has some impressive qualities, some areas do fall short. First up is the date window. You'll notice it's awkwardly butted right up to the number three, without that integer being cut away, as you often find on watches with similarly placed date wheels. To me, this looks extremely clumsy, and it lacks the finesse that you generally find with more established watch brands. Something else I noticed pretty quickly is the rough finishing on the hands. They do have a good amount of loom, but the brushing is sloppy, especially on the second hand, which looks like it's had a pretty hard life. Despite the flaws, I think it's undeniable that there's some value to be had here. For the right target market, this watch packs a lot of punch, especially for a brand not associated with wristwatches. But I'm not sure who exactly this is for. Perhaps this could provide a good entry point into mechanical wristwatches for those young'uns who like these fashion brands. If so, it's currently at a great price, unlike alternative offerings from the likes of Vincero, Movement, and Filippo Loretti, whose automatic watches start at often several hundred pounds. If you've watched this video and like the watch, it's linked down below. I'd recommend also grabbing an additional two-piece strap that doesn't pass behind the case, unless you like the floating look. Subscribe for more weird watch videos. I'll see you next time.